Hello, everybody, and welcome to the DH Pickleball Show. My name is Mike Behrens, and this show is where I sit down every week to talk with my good buddy, David Henry, who you can see on the screen, and we talk about his journey in pickleball and his, his, what he does to optimize his game, optimize his performance, and all the things to make himself a better pickleball player. So today, let's talk to David and see how he's doing. How are you doing, bud? Hey, doing very well, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited to have a, another conversation with you. In the last episode, we talked about your recap of what you did for June. So that was awesome. It was a lot of fun to talk about that. But today, we're going to get back to some customization. And so a couple episodes ago, we talked about grip and customizing the grip of the paddle. So in today's episode, though, we're going to talk about the weight, balance, swing weight, paddle matching, all the things that come with that. So let's get right to what we're going to talk about tonight, and that is pickleball, paddle, customization, weight balance, swing weight, and paddle matching. And so let's talk about all of that. Give us kind of a quick overview of what that is, what that means, and, and why you might start to think about doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar to what I said on the grip episode, where I talked about how I customize and optimize my grip, is that, you know, I do all of this customization, the grip, and then what we're going to talk about tonight to gain that incremental, you know, advantage. Again, I, you sure. know, at this at this point, I'm I'm trying to improve my game and take it to another level and another level, another level. And as we talked about before, the only way I'm going to get there is again not a massive magic thing that I'm going to do that's going to advance my game tremendously at once. It's going to come from a lot of small incremental gains, and that's what this is. That's why uh, you know customizing paddles are just so important to me. And so, so yeah. So with with regard to customize my paddles, I'm really looking at three things. I'm looking at weight, I'm looking at balance, and I'm looking at swing weight. Now there is a fourth one called twist weight, and I'll touch upon that maybe in, in a little bit. I don't I don't necessarily um, optimize for twist weight, but the other three are super important to me. Why? Why are those important? Yeah, well, well, I'll start with weight. I mean, that, 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 <laughs> okay. that, that, that's the first one to do. And so, yeah. so, so weight, um, it's really probably the least important of the metrics um, from a standpoint of, unless you're at the extreme. So let, let me explain that. So <clears throat> most, most pickleball paddles will fall in a certain weight range, okay? And, mm -hmm. and um, obviously, if your paddle is way too light, feather light, you're not going to be able to plow through the ball at all. It's, it's going to be worthless. And if you're okay. at the other extreme that it's super, super heavy, you know, that that's not going to do you any good either. So weight at the extreme is important not to be there, but kind of sure. weight in the, in the, in the middle is, is important. And one thing that's <clears throat> super interesting to me and kind of drives me nuts a little bit is in the pickleball world. So, so I, as we've talked in previous episodes, I come from a tennis background, you know, years, years and years of tennis and pickleball is fairly new to me, but in a tennis world, rackets are always measured in grams. Okay. okay. And in pickleball, I come to this pickleball world and they're there. I'm scratching my head because they're, they're always measured in ounces. So people will say, Oh, my paddle's <laughs> 8.1 ounces or 8.3. And I'm thinking, grams is a smaller increment it's a more precise <laughs> measurement like why why are we talking in in you know ounces and and uh so anyway so i measure my paddles in grams so sure, i can okay. i can Fair even enough. tell you if, if i if i needed to translate my paddles to ounces i'd have to get out a online <laughs> an online calculator in order to do that so i i do i do it in grams and so Really, really measuring a paddle for, for weight is just super simple. I've got this little cheap kitchen digital scale. Awesome. And and basically, you know, I will I will turn it on and set my paddle right on top of it. Excuse me. And it gives me the, the readouts of, of grams. And so that's how I measure the weight. Pretty okay. simple. And it, are they all pretty standard across the board? Like, is it going to be different depending on the manufacturer? Or is it a pretty standard weight for just a basic paddle when you purchase it? I mean, I mean, there, there, there's some, there's some variation, but they're, they're all fairly standard. Um, you know, like, like, uh, the, the, what I play now, let me, let me just pull, pull up my specs. Um, what, what I play now with the Yola Hyperion CFS paddle, um, 
I've got that coming in right now and I, I've, I've optimized and added some weight to it. And we'll, we'll talk about that. I've got that coming in at 234 grams, but yeah, I okay. mean, there, there, there's a relative range that they all come in again. Some, some people want a little bit lighter paddle. Some people want a little bit heavier, but there's kind of a central range. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that out of the three things or three or four things we're going to talk about tonight, the weight is the first one that we should measure. And then, so then the next one is the balance. How do we start to measure the balance and yeah. how do we so, get an idea if our paddle, paddle is balanced? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so balance is obviously this way. So okay. your paddle is either head heavy or head light. Okay. And most pickleball paddles are going to be head heavy. So basically what you have is, let's say this paddle is, it's, it's about 16 inches, it's a little longer than that, but six, 16 inches from the bottom of the handle to the top. So, <clears throat> the perfect theoretical balance point would be right in the middle at eight inches. Okay. Okay. But rarely you're going to find a paddle. that has got that perfect balance point. So the actual balance point is something a little bit different. So instead of being right in the middle of that balance point, the actual balance points a little bit further toward the head because this paddle okay. is a little is head heavy. Um, so there's really a couple ways you can measure it. One is you can get out some paper and a ruler and just, put it on the edge of a table and kind of push the paddle over until you can determine where that balance point is. <laughs> okay. I prefer something a little bit more precise. And so I don't sure. know if it's going to show too well in, in this video, but I use, um, this is what's called a balance board and okay. it's for, it's for tennis. Okay. And, um, what it is is because pickleball powder is a lot shorter. I had, I had to mount my own ruler on here. Okay. Because they've got some measurements here for tennis rackets. But I, I paddles are shorter, so I had to mount my own ruler. I super glued my own ruler on here. Nice. But what, what you do, and again, it's probably going to be hard to show here, but you know, you'll set the paddle on here, and then I've got these little knobs here. So I yep. can move the paddle with these knobs. I'm moving the paddle down, and eventually oh, cool. you'll you'll see where the paddle starts to lift off of that ruler. So let me see it, see it's starting to lift off. Yeah. So that and, and and what I love about the balance board is with this 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 little roller. Like I can get super precise. Like I can barely turn the roller until I b almost see that paddle just barely lifting off. Yeah. You know, so I can get real precise. And then what I do is once I see that point, I measure that on the ruler and I know where that balance point is and I have to do yeah. a few, a few simple calculations, you know, to compare then the theoretical middle even balance point with what the actual balance point is. And um, it's measured, it's, it's, it's measured in eighths of an inch. Okay? okay. So, so what I would say is my paddle right now, the way I play with it, it is 234 grams that we said for the weight. And then the balance is 12 points H as in Henry. So what that means is a point is Henry equivalent to David Henry. No, no. Well, and that's just, that's just, <laughs> that's just, that's just, that's just <laughs> how I'm, I'm it. It, No, no, absolutely. It's uh it's, um, Eighth, eighth of an inch is a point. So basically that's 12 eighths of an inch and the H means head, head heavy. Ah, got it. So, got so, it. Okay. so, so it's 12 points head heavy is what the balance point is, got it. you know, and, and, and ba balance points important to know from the standpoint of, uh, as far as what, what your swing weight, we'll get into that, you know, it, is going to be. And, you know, if, if you have a head heavy paddle, it's going to have a higher swing weight. You're going to get certain performance benefits in it. But on the other hand, it could cause some hard problems, which it has for me in the past. We'll touch upon that probably in another episode. But um, also, it you know it can slow down your hands at the kitchen line. So when you're doing fast volleys, you know it can slow. So there, there's just a, a give and a take as to you know where you want your balance point. But I prefer mine to be a little bit more head heavy. Got it. Okay. All right. So then the weight, the weight is important because you got to figure out what you're, what you're playing with the balance and then the swing. So then tell me about the swing weight piece. That's the part where I'm just like, okay, how does that factor in with, with all of this? Yeah. So swing, swing weight to me is the most important measurement and it's kind of a okay. function kind of, of weight and balance, but what swing weight is, it is the distribution of weight along the length of the paddle. So okay. swing weight really determines how a paddle feels when you're swinging it through the air. So here's an example is if you took a hammer and you held the hammer at the very bottom end of the handle and you've got yeah. the heavy mallet at the top and you're swinging that hammer around, 
you've got a lot of weight at the top of that, and that's going to be a right. heavy swing weight, a high swing weight. Okay. If you flip that hammer over and you hold it by the mallet mm -hmm. end, and then you're waving it around, it's going to feel a lot different. So the weight is the exact same. The hammer didn't change weight. It's just the, right. the distribution of the weight along the hammer. And that's what it is here. It's the distribution of the weight. I think it's expressed. So, so the swing weight that I'm playing with right now is 125. And that, 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 it, that means it's 125 um, kilograms per square centimeter. That's, that's the unit of measurement of swing weight. Now, how to calculate swing weight, way, be, way, <laughs> way, way, way beyond me. I, I don't know how, I, I couldn't get out a piece of paper, you know, and calculate swing weight. Um, but I have a machine for it. I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. But, but okay. yeah, that's what it is. It, it's um, kilogram per square centimeter. So 125 is my swing weight. Um, Got so it. this machine here, it's hard to see. It's, it's called the graffiti. Um, okay. And I, I bought the, bought this machine. I found it online. It's one of the probably the only machines out there that measures swing weight. So basically, sure. I set my paddle in here, and then I can move it. So it, it swings back and forth. And so the paddle, you know, it, it, it measures the paddle swinging through the air like this. So me okay. measures the paddle and, and, and it measures, measures the swing weight for me. And what it's cool is the guy that developed it, um, again, su super smart, far smarter than I am, but he, uh, <laughs> there, there's a, there's an app and he's got a cradle designed on that machine. So I, I put the graffiti app. It's B R I F F I D I. If anyone's looking, um, the guy's name is designed as Brian, um, Fitzgerald. Okay. Um, and so that's for Brian and Fitz, and then he just added the ED on the end. So for <laughs> yeah. graffiti, but, um, but yeah, so, so he designed the app that goes with it. And so, the, so the phone just rests in a cradle on my swing weight machine and phew, takes the measurements. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful oh. thing. I absolutely love it. That is cool. Okay. So, so the, to adjust that swing weight then, which I'm sure you'll talk about in just a few minutes and me figuring this out in my head, as you're explaining yeah. it to me. We add more weight, we change the balance point to adjust the swing weight, right? Correct, correct. So thank you for using the hammer analogy because that resonated with me. I'm like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, and I, no, I think I can take credit for that. I'm sure I saw that years ago on a tennis video <laughs> when someone was explaining swing weight with regard sure. to tennis rackets. But yeah, it, it really, it really kind of helps. And so, if you have. Um, no, we'll get, we'll get into that in a minute with panel matching. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll okay. hold off on that comment. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, it, it, so, okay. So you've kind of shared with us where your paddles are, are with this. It was, uh, what was your, your weight? Yeah. So, so right now, and this is after some experimentation and some arm problems, things like that, but I, I've settled in on my paddles, um, at 234 grams, 12 okay. points, head heavy, and a swing weight of 125. And I found that that's ideal for me. And so it's probably probably good for me to explain like why. So sure, yeah. um, obviously adding more weight to the, to the head of the paddle or anywhere in the upper is gonna drastically increase your swing weight. And what that does from a performance standpoint is it's just gonna give me a lot more power and it's gonna give me a lot more uh, top spin, like on some some of the drives and some of the shots they say, because really you got to think of it, you've got a lot more mass just coming through the ball and whipping over it, you know. And when you've got yeah. that much mass behind it, it just adds to the power and it adds to the spin potential that I'm able to put on the ball with top spin. <clears throat> now, again, what it what it does from the negative side is it could slow me down because there's a lot of fast hands battles at the net where you're volleying. You got you to move your hands so fast. And so if I've got a heavier paddle, I'm dragging through the air, you know, it, 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 could, it could slow me down there. And then um, it could also um, create some arm problems, which it, 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 did, it did for me. So I used to play with a higher swing width than what I do now, and I've had to lower it in order to help with my, my arm problems. Um, but yeah, so that, so that, that's kind of the reason, you know, that, that I, that I weight my paddles the, the way that I do. And, you know, there's, there's other people that are going to want to, you know, maybe make their paddles less head heavy. And so, you know, you put your weight more down in the handle, you know, and there, there's the, um, the thing that I talked about with, uh, I mentioned twist weight. 
So I would put that in the machine and I would measure the paddle swinging this way. So it would be mm. about the distribution of the weight across the paddle, as opposed to swing weights that measure a distribution up and down. Twist weight is the twisting of the paddle. So sure. it's distribution across the way. And that matters for some people. So, you know, if, if, if there's a player who, for example, is not exceptionally skilled at hitting perfectly center sweet spot shots all the time, and they're hitting more around the edge of the paddle, then if they've got a really high twist weight and they hit an off center shot, the paddle's not going to move as much. Uh, so, you okay. know, for someone, someone who's not, you know, doesn't, doesn't hit all uh, the perfectly centered shots all the time, that could be a reason to increase the twist weight or someone who really likes to block back volleys, you know, and really wants that punch in the volleys and they don't want the paddle twisting, you know, when they're volleying, that could be a reason to add weight you know, to, to the sides of the paddle and increase the twist weight. So it's really fun. It's really cool. There's, you know, so many things that, that you can do, you know, sure. as far as <clears throat> optimizing, you know, paddles for just different performance outcomes. So question with, yeah. um, how did you get to that point? Like, so you've got your, what you're at now, but it obviously took some trial and error to get there. And so over the last couple of years, where did you start at versus yep. where you are now? And how did you figure out how to progress to get to where you're at? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really, really good question. So basically th this paddle um, out of the box tends to be a head heavy paddle, just the, okay. way, the, way, the way it's designed. But what I did was I, um, I knew I wanted to hit a heavier ball on some of my drives. So faster, more okay. power and more top spin. So I experimented by putting you know, more, more weight up toward the head of this paddle. And yeah. I drove the swing weight for a while. I drove the swing weight up to about 130. Okay. So now I'm, okay. I said 125, I drove the swing weight up to about 130. And I mean, the, the, the performance on the drives, I mean, you know, powerful drives, heavy top spin, but your elbow, <laughs> the, the arm, the elbow, the the the, the tendonitis re really started started getting me, and, gotcha. uh, and 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 you know and and it and again I think we're gonna talk in another future episode about tendonitis and dealing with all sure. that. So and I won't say too much about it here, but I've always had years of it from playing tennis, and and sure. then with with pickleball it really wasn't bothering me that much, but then started playing with this head heavier paddle. Then I started adding weight to this paddle and really drove up the swing weight to 130. And that's when the arm problems really, really started. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, so basically I just had to lower it a little bit and, it, and I just lower it kind of like in increments, so but just reducing the weight, you know, yeah. and, and toward the head of the paddle. Mm -hmm. So I took it down to around from like 130 to around like 127, 128 swing weight. And it was better, but still, given me some issues. And so then I backed it off now to 125 with the intent that if I need to back it off more, I will, because um, sure. I want to play this sport for many, many more years. But um, 125 right now seems like a really, really nice sweet spot for me because I haven't lost a ton of power on my drives. I haven't lost a ton of spin on my drives and the arm problems are getting a lot better at the lower at the lower swing weight and um also i've noticed that my hands at the kitchen line are a little faster now too because of that lower swing mm. weight so it's really I'm, I'm really really pleased with the specs of where, where i have my paddle right now and you know it, it was getting bad when it was that heavy because again if you think about it on a, on a shot that i'm doing like a one hand backhand or a one hand volley anything i'm doing one hand it's almost like you're holding a heavy frying pan, you know? So I'm sure. holding it down here and I've got all this weight and it was just stressing my wrist. It was stressing my elbow, stressing my shoulder. So yeah, I'm really happy that I made those adjustments. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks for explaining that because like the, <clears throat> to make the adjustments, how much of the balance comes in and I may be getting into the weeds here. So stop me. If sure, I sure. Sure. How much of the balance comes, uh, into play like adding weight yes when you add like i guess my, my question is getting at how do you do that how do you adjust those <laughs> that would be my question is that you add weight to the front to then increase the and then you got to fix the balance and how yeah does that yeah work? yeah and i and, and, and to be to be honest um once i got the swing weight machine i can measure swing weight 
-hmm. balance is not as important to me. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it's it's not as as important. So I'm looking at I'm kind of looking at the overall weight. I want it in a decent range, and then I'm really just paying attention to that swing weight. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's just knowing where to add the weight. And um, you know, I think I think what we'll do in um, the next episode that probably will help people a lot is I'll kind of go step by step through some oh, cool. of this. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that'll answer that question probably a, a little bit better. But uh, but yeah, the swing weight, once I got the machine, that's really what I pay attention to and I love it. Got it. Okay. All right. So then uh, the next thing is, is you, you said before that you play with multiple paddles and you have yes, multiple sir. paddles on hand. So then what is this concept of paddle matching and how does that work and, and line up with swing weight and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, this is I love this topic, and and I think I, I, <laughs> okay. I think I think you'll find it fascinating. I think a lot of the viewers will find it fascinating. Uh, it's just super interesting to topic. So, <clears throat> paddle matching is yeah. I I carry I, I I have four of these now, and my first one's getting in a little bit too bad a condition. So you know, but but I, I've got four four of the same pad that I carry in my bag, and I carry more. I mean, do I need four paddles in my bag? Probably not, but um, just in case one would break or just any, anything would happen during, during a match or a tournament. I just feel better having more paddles yeah. in my bag that I can reach yep. into. And what happens is when I reach into the bag to grab a paddle out, I don't want to have to say, Ooh, that's my favorite one. Let me grab that uh, one or that, you know, I want, yeah. I can bl blindly pick a paddle out of the bag and I want all four of them to feel and play the exact yep. same way and in order to get them to feel and play the exact same way they all need to have identical specs sure. with regard to weight balance and swing weight yeah. and probably the you know you you being a very very smart guy and a probing question asker is <laughs> how how david you have four paddles how how different were the are the specs on all those four paddles before yeah. you mat before you matched them? So you gonna ask me that? Well, yeah, I don't have to now, <laughs> but yeah, how different were they? Because I mean, they're they're the same paddle. Obviously, you buy them direct from the manufacturer or wherever you buy them from, but they're the Retailer, same paddle. Sometimes from manufacturer, so, yeah, yeah. So in theory, they should be the same, right? But were they? <laughs> they, they? They were not at all. So, so yes. So, yes. So, so all, all the same brand of paddle, all, all Yolas. And I'm just going to yeah. talk about my first three. My fourth one, I bought a, what's called the Swift version of this, which is a lighter, lighter version. So I'm going to throw okay. that out of the analysis because it really is a different model. But the mm, first okay. three that I, that I have of this, they're all brand of Yola. And they're all the exact same model of paddle, which is the Hyperion CFS Ben John signature paddle. So yes, in theory, yeah. all three of those paddles should come out of the box from the factory or the retailer, wherever I buy it, identical. Yeah. Manufacturing tolerances and variances, we know, you know, you sure. could put a little extra glob of glue on the inside and, you know, I mean, so, so yeah. you know, the, the, they're probably not as tight as they should be, the variances and tolerances at the factories. Hopefully they get better in time, but sure. they're just not there right now. So yeah, so... Yola one, my first, my first one, <clears throat> it came in at a weight of 234 grams. And th this is, this is, this is naked. So I strip off the factory grip. I don't have any weight, any tape, nothing on it. So it's just the bare handle and the paddle face. So naked paddle, it came in at 234 grams. Okay. Yola two came in at 232 grams. Pretty close, right? Yeah. Two gram, two gram difference. That's that hardly noticeable. Doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yola 3 came in at 219 grams. Whoa. <laughs> That's a little so, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so crazy. So then from a balance standpoint, Yola 1 was six points head heavy. Okay. Yola 2 and Yola 3, respectively, were 15 and 13. So you're talking 13 versus Whoa. six or 15. So the balance point was way different on yeah. the panels. And then um, when I put all three of them on the swing weight machine, the um, Yola one was 125. Yola two was 128. And then Yola three was 120. So again, significantly wow. different swing weights. And so you'd wow. notice, you'd notice that yeah. when you're playing, yeah, my you know, there is like as a new person, <clears throat> you could 
I mean, depending on the panel you purchase, it could totally affect your game. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, absolutely. And, and it and it's 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 um, you know, it, it's it's really interesting from the standpoint of again, that's that's where I don't want a favorite paddle. So yeah. you know, if I played with them all unmatched, so just the way they came out of the box, I'm sure one of them is going to feel better and play better for me. And then that'll be my favorite one. Then I never touch the other two, you know? So, so I don't want a favorite paddle. I want them all to be identical. Again, I can go blind in the bag, grab a paddle and, and they're getting play identically. And I want to be fair <clears throat> to Yola. Um, and it's, it's not, not just them. So be, before sure. I had those Yola paddles, uh, I had two Franklin Ben John signature paddles. So again, same brand of Franklin, exact same model of paddle was the Ben John signature paddle. And, those those two are different as well. So one of them, Franklin mm. one is two hundred and twelve grams, and Franklin two was two hundred and twenty two. So ten gram difference. That wow. that's pretty that's pretty significant. Um, mm. The balance points on both those are really close, thirteen and fourteen. So the balance okay. point was really close. But then um, since the balance points were close, and since Franklin one was much lighter than Franklin two. I knew it would have a lower swing weight. And so the yeah. swing weight on Franklin one was 120 and the swing weight on Franklin two was 125. So five swing weight differences. Again, that, that's pretty, pretty significant. So, you know, I just wanted to be fair to go on that. It's not, not just them. Sure. It's, it's every brand. And I've heard, I've had friends kind of measure just the weight and balance and stuff on other brands of paddles and same thing. Huh. That's crazy. That I mean, I guess I've, I've never really thought about it because as, as we've shared, I'm not a pickleball player. <laughs> so sure. I don't know much about it. So I'm learning as we go. But it, it's really cool to, to, to hear that that can be fixed, so to speak. And, you know, you talked about in the next episode, we'll, we'll go a step by step breakdown on how to yeah. do it. But I think just knowing that for the novice out there, like your paddle choice is a big deal. And then also knowing that the just the way things are manufactured, there's variances that happen. No sure. fault of the manufacturer. It's just what it is that they're going to, there's potentially could, uh, if you feel like your elbows straining, maybe your swing weight's a little too much. And so maybe you should really look into the customization and that's a reason why you should really try to listen to the show and find out how to customize your, your paddle. Right. So no, yeah. that's, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And, and I, and I think a really good point along the lines of that is again, you want you want to first, optimize one paddle so yeah. get that to your playing style again do you want more power you want more spin do you want faster hand like what's your playing style and what are you looking for for performance from your paddle then once mm -hmm. you get that dialed in then know what those specs are so know exactly what those specs are and then if you add a second or third paddle then you can take that second and third paddle and you can match it to the specs that you already know work for your game so if someone were to purchase a paddle from the retailer and out of the box, not make any customization to it whatsoever, sure. and it feels good, then they should measure that so that the next paddle they buy, it's they could match it. Or Correct. if it feels bad, they should, instead of writing off the paddle as the paddle's the problem, they could potentially customize that paddle to make it fit what they're looking for, if I'm following. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's that, that's it, it, exactly it. Now, the only the only caveat to that is you can't really without you know altering a paddle, you can't really lower weight and swing weight. Because again, sure. I, remember, I'm measuring this stuff naked, so you can't really lower yeah. the weight because you got the bare handle and you don't have any any extra weight on it. So you can't really lower the weight and you can't lower the swing weight. You know, again, without someone will say, Oh yes, you can, you can drill holes yeah. without sure. materially, without <laughs> materially altering the paddle, you can't lower weight and swing weight. So if you've got a paddle that you love and you've got certain specs and then you buy a second version of that paddle and it's higher weight or higher swing weight, you can't match down. You can't take that second paddle and lower the swing weight, and lower the weight. So you gotta hope, you gotta hope that, uh, uh, the second paddle is actually has lower swing weight and lower weight. Cause then you can match it up or you're going to be forced to take the one that you love and you're going to have to match it up slightly, you know, and increase the weight and swing weight. So that's just one, one caveat that I've run into in matching my paddles. So thinking, Oh, 
I got this second yeah. one. I got this second one now, and it's got a higher swing weight than my first one, so I can't match to my first one. You just got to make some alterations okay. and adjustments. Okay. So with that, along that same lines, for a new person starting out with this, what would be your – I mean, I guess you just kind of gave some advice, but what would be the first thing to pay attention to as a newer person that's purchasing a paddle, and how would I even go about to know what to look for in, in those instances? Yeah. And, and you really have to kind of, I think, just get any paddle at first, you know, decent, decent one. And, you know, do, do, do some research on some brands, things like that, that you, that you might like, and you can see what the pros are using and all, all the popular brands and things like things of that nature. But really you, you have to first and foremost, know your game. Like you got to, you got to understand your style of play. So if you're just a complete beginner and you're learning the game, it's not going to matter that much. Sure. But okay. as you get more, more skilled and more advanced and things like that, you really got to understand your game to understand, you know, what are your strong points? What are your weak points? And then what do you want your paddle to do? Do you want your paddle to enhance your strong points? Do you want your paddle to help make up for some of the weak points? And you just really have to understand your style of strokes and your style of play and what you want to accomplish before you can even say, okay, I want my paddle, you know, to, I want to add weight to my paddle blindly. Got it. You know, you just, just, just don't, don't want to don't want to do that right, right off the bat. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think that helps. And for, for anybody watching, I think it'll help with knowing yeah. where to start. And if they're, if they're at a point in their game where they're ready to start customizing it. And so, yeah. So well, you, it, well, Go you know, yeah, I'll just throw in one thing too, is, is that as far, as far as customizing a tip that I always have too, is uh, change one variable at a time. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, some, someone put a new grip on and then they put some weight here and then, you know, put some, you know, and it's like, and then, and then all of a sudden, Ooh, I like the change or I don't like the change. Well, you don't know what caused it. So, you know, I, I, I always recommend change one variable at a time. So I isolate the variable that, that yeah. you're changing so that you can say, okay, this specific change allowed me to play better or made me play worse. Or, you know, to really, really isolate that variable is, uh, you know, super important. Um, and, and then play with that variable that you've changed, play with it over the course of a week or several days or whatever. You know, don't just go out one time and, and say, oh, this change didn't work because maybe you were playing a super strong player or, hey, this change was amazing. Well, maybe you were playing a weak player or maybe the wind was stronger that day. Maybe you just didn't have as much energy. So, you know, I, I always recommend changing one variable at a time, but then testing that variable over a reasonable amount of time, playing several times. Just, again, not, not going out for an hour and say this adjustment sucks. You know, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse it. So and, and, and again, I think I think that's pretty much common sense. But you know, something I sure probably sure. should state. Okay. So so that's I mean, I think that'll be very helpful for a, for a newer person and somebody just getting into this because that leads me to the next question: is how many people are actually doing these kinds of things, like with customizing paddles and figuring out their swing weights, and then all having matching paddles? Are there a lot of players slash pros doing this kind of stuff? I don't think so much. So, um, our play, our players customizing the paddle and adding weight to it. Yeah. All, 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 all the time. Uh, people are doing that. I think a lot of times it's blindly, Oh, I'm going to just add, I'm going to add some weight to the tip. I mean, you know, I, I, I think some, <laughs> some of it's that, and some people know, know what they're doing. So yeah, I, I think adding weight and customizing paddle is happening a decent amount. Um, out right. there among, among players that, you know, are a little bit more than recreational players. Okay. Swing weight. I would, I would doubt hardly, hardly anybody is, is measuring swing weight. I mean, to my, to my knowledge, the, the graffiti is about the only, the only machine that can do it because there are a lot of machines that measure swing weight for tennis rackets. Okay. But where the arm sits on those machines, there's a shelf. And then the arm. Well, a tennis racket's much longer before you get to the head. So you put put the racket in the arm, the shaft of the racket sticks out over that ledge, and it can swing. Oh. Pickleball paddle's much shorter. So most of the tennis machines, with that arm sitting at the back, and then you got this paddle head dipping down, it hits the it hits it. So most ah. tennis swing weight machines are not you can't use for pickleball paddles. Well, Brian, when he designed the graffiti, he uh 
he designed it for tennis. Yeah. But what he did is he built this little pickleball attachment that he threw in ah. for me for free. I, I think I was the first person to buy his machine for pickleball. So he'd sold, he'd sold his machines for tennis, but I'm pretty sure I'm the first one. And so because of that, he threw this in for free. Normally he'd probably charge me 75, 80 bucks for this little attachment. But what it does is it shortens the length of the machine ah. for the shorter handle. And then because there's no base sticking out, the paddle can swing freely on the graffiti. So, you know, one of my, one of my good buddies, Denny, um, he, uh, he just bought a graffiti this, this past week. So he, he, he knew of mine and knew the stuff that I was doing. So, so he just bought it and he bought the pickleball attachment and things with it. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I, hardly anyone is measuring swing weight. Um, wow. and, in my opinion. And, and I would say, I, 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 I'm just guessing here. I do not have any knowledge of the pro tour whatsoever, um, sure. as far as like what, what the pros are doing with their, with their paddles. But, um, are they adding weight? Are they really wanting the grip where they want it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and they're logically adding weight to the paddle strategically, you know, where, where they know that if I add weight here, it'll do this or that. Absolutely. They're doing that. Are they formally measuring swing weight and matching their paddles? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. And, and, and so in addition to measuring swing weight, then um, I would say very, very few people are matching their paddles. And if they are, they, if I, sh I should, I should take that back. Probably a lot of people are probably trying to match their paddles with regard to weight. Sure. But as far, that doesn't mean anything. Sure. It's the distribution of the weight, you know, to be the swing weight. So I would say very few people are, are matching paddles and optimizing the way the way that I do. Again, I, I don't yeah. I don't want to sound arrogant like hey, I'm the only one out there doing it. Sure. I don't really I don't really know, but I, I would doubt there's many. Well, but it sounds like it's a it's it's very new to the pickleball space. The swing weight, like it sounds like it's been uh, just based on my uh, novice knowledge of this whole thing in the tennis world. Yes, that's a normal behavior but in pickleball it hasn't been adopted as a normal behavior but based on what you're telling me and, and, and the the advantages that you get from optimizing yours it seem would would seem kind of strange if a pro players not and if they if they want to optimize their game I mean, for anybody you know even if you just want to beat your buddy on the weekend you know like sure, <laughs> sure. optimize your paddle as best you can uh in a swing weight machine if you can optimize it and get a better drive then why not? Right. And so I, maybe, maybe you're, you're about to set the world on fire with swing weight and pickleball. I mean, maybe that's what this episode will be. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe so. I don't, I don't have time to have people send me all their paddles, you know, and, 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 and do, do the customization. I could probably make a good, a good side, side income doing that. But, uh, you know, I, well, I, I like, what we're going to do. Do I like doing it. Yeah, yeah. I li yeah, exactly. I, li I like doing it with my own paddles, but I don't. I don't have the time to do it with everybody else. But um, a, a good friend of mine, Joe, Joe Spadafore, is a great, great player um, locally here in the area. Uh, he had me try out a different paddle uh, recently. Uh, I, I won't say the br the brand or the name because I'm not switching to it. Uh, but he he had me try it out because he he reps them. And, um, it's a, it's a great paddle. It, it real it really is. And it's super similar to the one that I use. So then I, I bought one from him at, at, you know, he, he was kind enough to sell it to me at his price. And so I, I bought one from him and then I weighted it up and I matched it to my Yola's. So I had the yeah. exact same spec for that other paddle. I have the exact same specs. And even though the specs were the same, the shape of the paddle was a little different. So you can see how this is more of an arrow curve around the top. Mm -hmm. It was more of a traditional rectangle. And then the carbon fiber surface uh, was a little less gritty. It was smoother. So it probably mm -hmm. had a little more pop. So, so I, I played, I played with the paddle um, for a couple hours and um, just didn't love it. Sure. Um, you know, again, I, I could just feel a little bit extra drag because it didn't have that arrow curve. And yeah. I could feel a little bit of extra pop on the ball, a little bit more power. And that's not what I'm looking for in my game. I can generate my own pop and power. So I'm looking for more of a control paddle. And so I just was telling him, hey, man, it's a great, great paddle. And, you know, it'll be a great backup for me. Or maybe I'll sell it to a buddy who's looking for a, a great paddle. But it's just not for me. And here's why I explain those things. And he he texted me back and he paid me, paid me a great compliment. And he just said, 
he said, wow. He said, I'm just so impressed with how in tune you are with how your paddles feel and play. Sure. And he said, he said, you're probably far more in tune than a lot of the pros are. So again, sure. I don't know. I don't, he doesn't have any inside knowledge either. He was just saying <laughs> pro probably, but, um, but yeah, that, that was, I, I, I appreciated that compliment and I am, I'm just super in tune with my, how my paddles play and just very anal and meticulous about it and just want to make sure that uh, everything's customized, optimized and matched perfectly. Oh, obsessed, awesome. obsessed. So our, 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 our mutual friend, J Jason St. Clair from X Endurance, he, uh, he saw one of my stories the other day about on Instagram about uh, optimizing customer. He's like, oh, that's so cool, you know? And so, and, and I was explaining a little bit to him about it um, through some, some direct messages. And I said, yeah, you, you, you can say that I'm obsessed. He said, <laughs> he said, he said, obsessed, LOL. So he, he found that funny, but I, I am, I am. I'm obsessed with those details. No, that's good, man. I think that, I think that like those details are key for, and, and, you know, you're sharing the whole point of this, this podcast is sharing what you're doing on your journey in, in the pickleball world to optimize your game, to make yourself the best pickleball player that you can be. And these little tips and tricks for somebody new to pickleball or for somebody who wants to go on that journey as well and have their own pickleball journey. Maybe, you know, that your obsession can become a, uh, way for other people to implement their game and to make their, make their game a little bit better. So I think that step-by-step -step that we're going to talk about, uh, in the next episode will be huge to help people on that path. So let's wrap up tonight. And then we yeah. can, if for everybody that got a lot of value from this information tonight, tune into the next episode where we're going to talk a little bit more step-by-step -step of how to do this process so that you can actually, uh, really dive in and optimize your swing weight and your weight, your balance and figure all this kind of stuff out. So anything you want to share, David, before we jump, before we jump off of this episode and make everybody wait to tune into next week. Yeah, no, no, I, th I think, I think I'm good. I think we covered a lot of, a lot of information and, you know, just, by my smile and excitement and tone of voice, you know, I, I hope it comes across that I love this stuff. I just love, love talking about it, but yeah, I think, I think we hit all the important points. So I appreciate your time. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I think it definitely comes across that you are, what's that word? <laughs> Obsessed. All right, everybody. For thanks sure. for tuning in this week to the DH Pickleball show, and we will see you in the next episode.